What's up, YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the stock studio in a fiend designer on the iPad? Well, that is what we are here to talk about today. Okay, welcome back. My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're here to talk all about the stock studio in Infinity Designer. We've been going along, going through each studio and taking a deep dive into what each of them do. So if you haven't seen those other videos, make sure that you check out this playlist so that you can catch them all. We'll be continuing to do these studios throughout the year. So today we're talking all about the stock studio, and the stock studio is really useful. You know, sometimes when people come over from Adobe, they say, well, I'm kind of concerned because then I won't have access to Adobe stock. Now, while of course Adobe stock is a massive library, it also costs a a lot of money. It doesn't come as part of your creative cloud and so you still have to pay out either for a different monthly subscription or for each asset as you use it. So the Affinity Stock Studio is really helpful when you do need a stock image. So let's go ahead, let's dive in on the iPad and see what we can do with the Stock Studio. So here we are in Affinity Designer on the iPad and we just have a blank document opened up here just so we can see how this Stock Studio works. This is going to be a fairly short video because the Stock Studio is really simple, it's incredibly useful but it's very simple to use. Stock Studio is going to be located just about halfway down the right hand side. It looks like a standard picture icon with like mountains and a sun. So go ahead and tap on that and that's going to open up your Stock Studio. Here you're going to see there isn't much going on at first. At the top you have something that says Pexels or yours might say something else. This is the menu to select from the stock libraries. So there are three stock libraries that this Stock Studio pulls from. So if we tap on that, we'll see what they are. There's Unsplash, there's Pexels, and there's Pixabay. These are all royalty-free stock sites that you can just pull from and you can use. Now you do need to make sure that you have agreed to the terms and conditions. So you can see down here below the icon and the little blurb, there's a little button that says, I understand. Just letting you know that these are not provided by Serif themselves, they're just hooking in to that network. So this is a super useful way to just get in some stock imagery that you might really need at any given time. And all you basically have to do is search and then you'll find it. Just make sure that you've checked the I understand box. So let's try this for each one. I'm just going to go here, tap to search, and we're just going to search VW bus because I like Volkswagens, obviously. So let's go along here and then you can see it's going to pull up all of the pictures from Pexels that are VW buses. Let's just go ahead and grab the first one. If you forgot to check the box before you grab this, then it will prompt you to do that. But let's go ahead, just click it and you can see you can pick it up and then drag it out. It will take a second to download because these are pretty big files. They're high resolution photos most of the time. So it'll take a second to download it, but this is way more convenient than having to go out into Safari, find it, download it, import it from your downloads, all of that. This makes it super easy. So you can see it places it at full scale. So this is bigger than my canvas. So I can zoom out to see where it is. And then of course, just using my move tool, I can just go ahead and I can scale that down. So there's one from Pexels, nice orangish yellow van there. Let's go ahead and see what the other ones are like. So from here, let's go to Unsplash and it keeps my search, which is super nice. So I can search all of these for the same thing and then I can find these. And then if I come along here, I can just go ahead and select the one that I want just by trying to drag it out. And then you can see that I hadn't checked this one. So it's gonna make sure that I check so that I understand that this is from a third party, click close. And now I'll be able to click and drag that out. So the nice thing about pulling from three different stock libraries is it means that there's more that you'll be able to choose from. And of course, I think most designers have used Unsplash or Pexels or Pixabay at some point in their career, but it's just super nice that we have them here ready and available for us. Okay, let's go to Pixabay here. And so we pull this one up and we get another set of vans here. Of course, if I don't have it checked, it will ask me to check it. So I just click on, I understand, close. And then I can get my next picture and bring that out. So there you have it. That's a super easy way for you to go ahead and get a hold of some stock photos. There's all kinds of things here in this stock photo library. Obviously I was searching for Volkswagen buses, but you could search for anything that's out there and you're probably going to find a photo that you can use. Remember, these are royalty-free images, so you're welcome to use them. Now, because they are royalty-free images, that might mean that some of these photos get used a lot in a lot of different things. So they might not always be the best for your final product, although sometimes that might be fine, but often it's great for you to just be able to get a hold 
hold of some photos right when you need to put something in as a placeholder or something like that, something that will look like what you might have at the end in case your photographer hasn't gotten something to you for your publication or something like that. And that's basically it for the stock studio. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've learned something and that you're excited to use the Stock Studio in Affinity Designer. I know that I've found lots of uses for this, and I did use the Affinity Photo version of this quite a bit in my course on creating photo compositions. That, along with all of my other courses, will be linked in the description of this video, so you can go ahead and check that out. Remember, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like, and if you like videos like these, go ahead and subscribe for more. Also, go jump in the comments and leave any thoughts that you have or any suggestions you have for future videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.